to quote a man with birds, I'm really high right now, and uh, I got a lot to get through, and this man with birds also knows how to relax his anus, so we're going to get to it. I'm a brick. Uh -huh. She's a brick. No way. He's a brick. Oh, way. We're all bricks, and y'all welcome to brick. Ah, that's how high I am right now. I said, to quote a man with birds, you're just going to have to deal with my ramblings right now. I'm pretty sure I screwed that up. I love you, Rich. So uh, if you ever if you ever see this, please do me an honor and, uh, and uh, let me talk to you in a live stream. I know that's a long reach and, and a long shot, but I've been watching you for a while. Anyways, welcome to the sesh today. As I said, I got a lot to get into. Um, <clears throat> this microphone stand. I uh, decided to extend it, and I uh, think it works. I think it works pretty well. Uh, 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 but we need to get to some vaporware. And that vaporware, well, first first things first. Okay, first things first. Yes, this, this, is, this is the point. This is, this is kind of actually a perfect little uh, jump cut to what needs to be talked about. But before we get to that, I need to mention something that these guys called out a few things. We're going to go point by point. I don't usually do this. I'm not sure I want to do this uh, on the frequent. Um, but this is, just, this, this, this is just me watching someone that I love happening to touch upon a point that is, in, that is exactly what I'm dealing with right now. That is exactly what the entire magic community is dealing with right now. So we're going to do it. Got their email today. I got an email from Wizard right. saying that. So, uh, Jacob Joel got my countdown kit. That he got his countdown kit. Okay. My countdown kit is on his count, its way. His countdown kit. Okay. We're going to take a pause there. Because I have a, a point of umbrage with the countdown kit. Like, I know in my last video, like, like I didn't want to be too negative. I'm actually very happy with what came in the mail. Everything worked out. Uh, uh, we're going to get to that. Uh, it's the, it's the point that's next going to come up on the video. But the, this countdown kit, I have a serious point of umbrage with. Like, I have a major point of umbrage with this countdown kit. Because this countdown kit reminds me of these festivals in a box. It's this idea of wizards, in my opinion, undervaluing what the idea of a secret lair is. And... I'm kind of getting sick of it because I like the original idea of a secret lair. I, I get that if you want to expand WotC, Hasbro, Wizards, Magic, Mark Rosewater, Morrow, everybody. But like, I feel like you don't give a chance to those of us that like the original idea. And, and you're starting to throw out secret lairs that are exclusive. Like this Magic Countdown kit. That, is it Jake or is it Joel? I'm so sorry, guys. Uh, I, I, you're both start with J. It's hard for me to confuse you. It, it's easy for me to confuse you. Hard for me to get you straight. If one of you, if someone can eventually correct me, which one's Jake, which one's Joel, that'd be awesome. Uh, uh, I love you both. Uh, but they got the countdown kit. I didn't get the countdown kit, and I was there. I was at the website. I, I was on the website, and I might have mentioned this before in my previous videos, and I'm sorry if I did. But I was at the website, and within the first. I don't want to say 30 minutes and be tr total dramatic, but definitely within the first three hours, like from like, it, it went live for me at nine and with it before noon, I went to go check and it said not available anymore. And, and that's kind of what I'm staring at right now here with Festival in a Box. Did the same thing. This Festival in a Box decided it's going to, it's going to put in a special arcane signet, which I think these, these alternate art cards right here are actually super cool. Uh, like, I don't know what exactly they're referencing, but I really like weird because magic is weird, and I so the weirder that we can go, the more inclusive by being weird we can go. I see they even tried to do the deck box thing, because this was a festival in a box that popped up earlier for Magic 30 in Vegas that gave you a Magic 30 virtual ticket. Uh, little Gree, Little Geary, little, whatever Little Geary is. This guy seems cool. Like I even like I even like the fact that if you get down here, um, you get an alternate soul ring and an alternate arcane signet. Okay. Arcane, arcane signet that's pretty cool i eventually want to get that one on myself because it kind of looks like um, a thanos uh infinity gauntlet 
And I'm sure I'll be able to get that on the secondary market. What I know I'll be able to get on the secondary market is this. Look, they're not even hiding it. They're not even hiding it. At the bottom, it says 2019 Wizards of the Coast Commander. So they're giving you... They're giving you a product and they're... Oh my God, I can't believe I'm seeing this in real time. How, how do I... There we go. Okay. Look at this. Right here. They're saying it's from 2019. On the card. So in the card preview where everything else is 2022. This one right here says Festival 2022. This one says 405. 2022. So they clearly thought about this. Uh, that's why it says 405 on it. They thought about this beforehand. They didn't account for this one. And that's my point. They're giving you a soul ring that was given away from the grant at the Grand Prix nearly three years ago now, 2019, right here. You could buy this on the secondary market right now, either non-foil or f maybe it's foil as well. Shit is dirt fucking cheap. Okay. Magic is destroying the market of their cards and making it so all the money flows into them, which is making it not fun for the rest of us that used to have a little bit of fun making money on the side with our collections. That's not gambling. That's not abusing the system. That's engaging in the marketplace of the game. And you are ruining your credibility with our ability to engage with the marketplace of the game because you are giving us crap. You are giving us crap again. Oh, you are giving us so much crap. You decided to pull it off a second time by doing Festival in a Box Philadelphia 2023. I'll get to the kitties in a second. The kitties in a second are gonna uh, uh, are part of my umbrage. But once again, you get the you get the arcane signet, which I guess this one comes in foil, and the previous one didn't come in foil. You're paying two hundred and seventy dollars for for a mystery box, a play mat, commander decks, and the kitties. The commander decks are where I have a problem with this because the whole reason I'm excited and not mad at Magic entirely is I felt like Magic was getting better with the gameplay construction of Commander decks. And let me tell you something. I haven't released the videos yet because I haven't figured out how to edit them correctly. But while the pandemic was going on, the Backstreet Boys uh, reunion tour, whatever you want to call it, I, I, I don't know what you can call it now and get away with. And I'm probably not going to get hit, so it doesn't really matter. Like, that while that was going on, I broke down each of the boxes that you get in this. You get... You get Zendikar Rising, Lands Wrath, and Sneak Attack, which is um, uh, the the Obon, the Obon uh, Spirit Maya Spirit, and, and I'm saying his name entirely wrong, and I, I don't really want to search it up right now because I'm trying to get go move beyond this and get to the actual fun in the opening, um, and and the Rogue deck. Point is, I have those decks and I kept those decks. They're they're great for gameplay, like the the Lands Wrath and Sneak Attack decks. I custom and added them to him. I'm trying to make them budget friendly. I'm I'm keeping. <clears throat> I'm I'm what you call a mid budget player. I don't like staying strictly to budget. But if the card is like five, maybe six dollars, maybe maybe ten dollars, we can sneak that card into our deck as well. It doesn't have to be necessarily twenty five fifty cents a dollar, two dollars in order to play with it in your deck. But like, we don't we, we ain't playing with two hundred dollar cards. That's that's the realm I read. And these decks hit that mark. I'm telling you, this is maybe kind of like. A, a foreshadowing and I'll eventually get those decks released because I really like I feel like magic has gone so far I haven't been able to to focus on the gameplay aspect that is so wonderful and enriching and, and fun and even though everyone's so worried about universes beyond and everything not being magic it's still magic the game mechanics are still magic the game mechanics are still sacrificing things and playing lands onto the battlefield and generating mana and, and attacking with creatures and playing enchantments and, 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 and sneaking things into play. Like, it's all of this and combined and, and, and slinging spells. Like, everything is it. It's still magic. So, like, when Wizards themselves doesn't let me send out my analysis of the decks that you're giving these people, in my opinion, in my opinion, you're ripping them off with giving them, it says one. You don't even get both. You get either Elven Empire or Phantom Premonition. Elven Empire is good. Like, it, it features a lot of Lorwyn Elves that come from Lorwyn combined with the Kaldheim Elves because they're both black green. It's very nostalgic to me. Excuse me. I, I kind of got into the tournament scene during the Lorwyn Time Spiral 
era of Magic, and that deck is really good. For, for whatever MSRP you find that for, that deck is really good. But now that I'm seeing you get it randomly, you don't even know what you get. So you pay $270 for, for, $100, for a $100 mystery box. Two $20 decks that, granted, I've broke it down, and I, I really want to share with y'all that, that the decks are worth it. But for the price that they're charging, you're not getting anything out of them. I think I resold uh, the Phantom Premonition deck for $15 because literally the cards aren't worth they, they, they depreciate after you sell them because the lands aren't worth it. Weirdly enough, people like the lands in the Elven Empire deck. I noticed the forests and the swamps were more desired from that deck. So when you when you purchase that deck, you're getting a little bit more value because people inherently desire the lands from that deck. For some reason, I, I'm a John Avon full art uh, guy myself. Um, I always stick to it. I, I, like, I like full art alternates as well. Um, so if, I don't know what's going on with that. But the, the the cards themselves aren't that great. I added a Muta Vault to the deck, and like, there's nothing more than two dollars in the deck, uh, including maybe Lathril itself. Uh, the Sneak Attack deck is about the same uh, from from Zendikar Rising. Like, I don't want to ruin my videos or whatever. I'm probably gonna do a combined video breaking down and giving you letter grades as to how magic um, how magic playable the decks are right out of the box because uh. They're not D's, and they're not C, and 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 only, and they're not C's. Like, so, like, they they figured out the mark of doing, it, and they're giving it to you for free, and then the coup de gras, the coup de gras, they're giving you these kitties. Now I don't know what the secret card is gonna be, because the secret card in uh in 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 Pride turned out to be Morrow himself. And, uh, and I bet you if I were to look that up right now. Yeah. This card is junk. Even Malumo Morrow Sorcery is better than him. And it's he's, he's still junk. He, he's still junk. Like all Morrows are junk. And this is what comes in the secret layer. So I don't know what's going to come in the kitty's secret lair, but I'm telling you right now, they're not giving you good cards. I would be very wary of this. Incredibly wary. The only good card you're getting is Lord Wingrace, and that just happens to be because he's Lord Wingrace, because he's one of the few uh, Planeswalker can be your commander cards, and he's actually really good at what he does, and he's one of the few commanders in, in those color combinations that even does what he does. Uh, that even does the whole land recursion thing, and then makes Cat Warrior uh, a token. So it's like a it's like an aristocrat. Tri it's like an aristocrat deck for Jund. Like that doesn't. Lord Wingrace is the good one, but Descendant's Path. Like how is this a cat card? At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card that shares a creature type with that, that card, you may cast it without paying its mana cast. If you don't cast it, put it on the bottom of your library. Like I don't even remember what set Descendant's Path originally came from. But how is this a cat card? It's not. It's just generic. It's just a generic creature type that happens to throw a cat on it. At least the Oh My God Kitty set was all cats. Felidar Sovereign, good cat, and I can see why it's put in there for Commander. But I bet you, once again, if we look up Felidar Sovereign, and I mean I'm a cat. I'm wearing a Leo shirt. Look, Felidar Sovereign is not even a dollar. Like, therefore, it's not a commander staple. Because you know what's a commander staple? Smothering Tide. You know what's a commander staple? Soul Ring. That is a reprinting card that is always at least $1 to $2 in every version that's ever reprinted. And I already, I already was ragging on the fact that, that for whatever reason, I caught them in the fact that they're just give, they're giving you in the box and they're not even hiding it, this exact promo. They didn't even change the the... The credits at the bottom of the card. That's how lazy Wizards and Magic is being right now. They're force feeding us crap and calling it us. They're force feeding us crap and calling it gold. And I don't like that. Because I like my gold to be genuine gold, not fool's gold. Okay? And hopefully that's what comes out of the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty boosters. Because any, I, I, I'm not going to get over the fact that as I'm doing this recording, I did not expect this. That as I'm looking at the free, the free stuff you get in the festival, 
It, they, they don't even hide it. This art is cool. This art is mega cool. Fucking super cool, actually. I want this art. But not at the cost of realizing that that they're, they're just not putting any effort into how they're... Or, sorry. They're clearly putting effort into surgically extracting as little value for the customer in these products as you can possibly get. Because if, if I count up the mystery box, the commander decks, the play mat, you're not paying $270 worth of product. There's no way the Arcane Signet is going to help boost up the, 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 the end. Of, there's no way the Final Fortune is going to help boost up the cost. This certainly is. This is 2 to $5. This is $0.50 cents to $5, depending on version and, and, and version, rarity. I mean, version, condition, and foil. That's what I was trying to say when I said, meant to say addition, rarity. Version, condition, and foil. 2 to $5. This card might be worth it because this art's never been printed before and might be the only thing desired out of it. But I, I hate to tell you this, people are just going to want the old bordered signets. It's, it's kind of what I wanted from, from the the Dan Frazier uh, set. Uh, greed? No one plays Greed anymore when you have access to people like Erebos. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's another enchantment that does that, but it, and it's one life. Like, what is this? Peak? A common? Curiosity? A common? Like... The amount of surgical extraction, Vandal Blast, that has now been so overprinted is not even worth anything. I know I got stuck a little bit right there. 269 no longer available. This one went up for sale, is no longer for sale. I think it's pretty telling that either Wizards themselves is letting people still pre order this. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it at all. I already got the four decks. Screw it. I don't care about this. The only thing I want is a playmat. And I don't think Phyraxia All Will Be One is cool enough to pay $270 for. Even with the box that you get. You definitely don't get good cats. You get one Lord Wingrace. So, I, I don't know what Secret Lair is doing. Secret Lair is now giving me the middle finger. And I was a supporter of Secret Lair. I think that's the point of this mini rant. And before I get to the good stuff. Before I get to the positive stuff. Because some people might find me ranting things on things good because we need to rant on wizards. And, and, and they are correct. They are rightful correct. If, if they believe and they support the fact that we need to rant to get against wizards to stop this madness, then we, we need to, to say, whoever has a voice, we need to say whatever our voice is. But that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the game of magic. And that's what I'm going to get back to. I'm going to get back to enjoying the game of magic, which leads us back to... <clears throat> got mine, got mine, I did. I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it. Nice. Excellent. Chat goes. I'm hoping that those get here quick. Chat inquires. If they're here before next Wednesday. Jake and I are going to probably do a stream next Wednesday where we open ours together. Casual, we're never going to see the coin flip secret layer. That doesn't actually exist. Boom, there it is. There it is. He thinks what the coin flip, coin flip secret flip exam secret doesn't layer. exist. Oh, he thinks the coin flip secret layer doesn't exist. Oh, that's where we're going to go with the positive. If he, he thinks the coin flip layer doesn't exist, and we're here to tell him it exists. Heads I win, tails you lose. All right. All right. Now that we're through the good stuff, the positive stuff, the fun stuff, do what we always do. Set the, oh, no. Timer. Where are you at? We're going to try to open all this in 10 minutes and evaluate the deck because I think it's important to evaluate the game as a game, not just the collectible. And I have my shrines here because at the end or maybe in the beginning, uh, yeah, you know what? We're going to just start with the, uh, with, with the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty boosters because I've been so annoyed at Magic that I haven't been able to catch up with the set that I have been most excited for that they teased in Magic 21 that it was coming back. Which, by the way, um, if you're a hardcore Magic player, uh, R&D seems to... Oh, by the way, before I get started, on I just have to comment. Secret layers suck so much. I made this dramatic on purpose. 
that they now put packaging in wax paper. Like, I was able to put my light on my phone. You can see the holes in the wax paper. This is not, this is this, this doesn't protect cards. If water were to have got in here, the cards would have been fucked. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hit the microphone. All right, well, I'm wasting time. Um, I just don't like that secret layer. It's like, this is a cool box, and I hope the box turns out well, and, uh, and the box seems to be a full deck, but this is unacceptable. Secret layers should not come in something like this. Okay. Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Boosters. Wizards, I'm very glad that you gave this as a, as a, as a thank you, whatever, for, for waiting. I mean, it's kind of an insult, but as a, as a compensation for waiting on the time, uh, to get our heads, ta heads, I win, tails, uh, you lose, uh, decks, because Kamigawa Neon Dynasty is the most exciting thing I've been looking for for fucking Magic and literally since I started Magic. Like, I get, to, I get to go back to Japanese lore that they told me we were never going to go back to our samurais, ninjas, and everything is cyberpunk. Like, come the fuck on. All right. We got samurai token and human monk token. We got Aki War Paint. Isn't that a reprint? Pretty sure that's a reprint. Iron Apprentice. Awaken. Awakened Awareness. Silver Fur Mask. <gasps> Yay! So I, I actually got a card for my ninja deck. Okay. Silver Fur Master. This is what I'm saying! I have a Yuriko deck. Ooh. That's a cool planes. All right. These are all here for good luck. My shrines for good luck. So we're gonna put the commons up here. We're gonna put the alternate borders over here. Reinforce Ronin. There we go. Fang of Shigeki. It's a green ninja. A snake ninja, prosperous thief. See more ninjas. Okay, this ninja goes over here. Soul transfer. Choose one. Is this no? This is the commander card. Okay, I literally got three green ninjas. I got Shigeki Juke Visionary, which is is that a green neon foil or is that just? Hold on, I have to look it in my own. That's a green neon foil. But it's a green card. It's probably not actually worth anything, but I'm actually stoked that my first pack has a green neon foil in it. Because, yeah, here's the alternate frame in Fang of Shigeki. We're here, Shigeki! Ah! Snake ninja! Snake druids! Jesus Christ! He's an, he's an insect ninja. I don't I don't have a pun for an insect ninja right now. But we got Fable of the Mirror Breaker. This card is kind of a standard staple right now. Is that the alternate version? Yes, actually, that is the alt. I like that. Look at that. It's so menacing. Reflection of Kiki Jiki. Yeah. This card might be worth a couple bucks. Like nothing's worth a lot of money in these packs, I don't think. But like that was cool. So there's my two ninjas. And I guess the rest of you is just rares is just gonna go. What is that? One, one, two, three, plus Fang of Shigeki because it's an ultimate. So I just brought Fang of Shigeki out because I got Shigeki in neon green ink. Like, look right there, there, right there at the bottom. You can see it's a neon green. I'm pretty sure I'm not tripping. Like, I'm not wrong on this. Anyways. Uh, we only got one more pack to go and four minutes to go, and I've already wasted enough time, so. Uh, release to memory, let's just, yeah, okay. So, soul transfer, I'm not, I'm not reading off the effects. Uh, release to memory, uh, Springleaf, Avenger, and, and Shigeki. I'm here just for the flash, because I love borders. I, I love borders and, and different artwork and, and stuff like that. Okay, these packs are tough. Are they Japanese? No, because the Japanese would be, it would be rare first. Okay, here's a token. We got, ooh, that's a cool treasure token. And a spirit. All right, that's cool. Those can go in my new ninja deck. 
And then we got Jukai Trainee, Virus Beetle, Norika, Yamazakai Poet. Cool. So she's related to the Yamazakai Containment Construct. The Fall of Lord Kanda. So does that mean... No, see, look, look at this. A double-sided foil is actually curling. I, I thought that was like what didn't happen, but I've been proved wrong. A double-sided foil curls now. That is sad, Magic. You should not be letting your quality control get so bad that your double-sided foil curls. We got an island. I'm just messing up the order here. I mean, that's cool that I got an island and a plane. I, I can't... I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I can't complain. We got a selfless spirit. Or selfless... Is that... Didn't I already get that? Seven tail mentor. Whatever. Selfless mentor. Jukai training. Izumi Prowly, Coiling Stalker, Blade of the Owner, Rampant Thing, Brilliant Restoration, Mirror Box, and March of Burgeoning Life. I believe that means, in magic terms, we got hosed. But, I like these cards. Because, look, I got, f I got like five green ninjas. I don't know what I'm going to do with green ninjas, but I got like five of them for the fun of me loving ninjas. I can't put them in Yuriko because Yuriko is only blue and black. I got a Blade of the Oni for my uh, um, Crick, now going to be Post, Son of Rich, po yeah, Son of Yagamoth deck, yeah! Uh, I got Rampant Rejuvenator, so I got two, I got Rampant, I got Release to Memory and Rampant Rejuvenator, it's a Plant Hydra, okay. Brilliant Restoration, return all artifacts and enchantment cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, okay, that's kind of cool. I, I, I need that effect for certain commander decks, so that's how we're going to look at it. I got a mirror box. Yeah! These two are going to go straight into a, into Reaper King. Because the whole point of all this is enjoying Commander. Because if I don't want to enjoy buying new products for Magic, at least I'm going to enjoy buying old products for Magic. Because this, this is now officially... I think I bought this a year ago. I think I bought this a year ago. They told us it was supposed to come out in April... Then it got delayed in April and told us wait till November, and here it is at the end of November. So, at least they didn't. At least it didn't get delayed a second time. I, I, I don't have it. Do I have a knife? I do. Cool, cool. I feel like getting around the 30 minute mark is just enough. Of course, thank you for being a part of Secret Lair. I'm kind of bittersweet about shit like this. And then a box within a box, because we like to nesting doll everything. Oh, it's a paper package. I hear something rattling around in there. All right, I guess uh, we'll save that box for uh, when I put the box cards away later. Hey, dumbass, why'd you put the knife away? I don't know. Maybe because you thought you didn't need it again? Huh. Who would have thought that? That you didn't need the knife again? Would have been a lot easier to open that package. Shut up! Oh, it's the coin! Sorry, I didn't mean to open it like... Like, you could see it in, in this camera, which is up here, but like... like uh, I didn't mean to open it like totally up there. It had... Stupid paper again. You know, I just uh, felt about things being wrap wrapped in wax paper. Freaking magic. Wrapping your things in wax paper. What are you doing? But the rattling around was, as I suspected, the coin. So you get this cool plastic. Yeah, it's plastic. It's not metal. It would have been nice if it was metal. It looks like you get the two commanders drawn on it. Orm and whatever. I'm pretty excited about this because I've never bought a commander deck that was curated by like someone. And this was curated by Gavin Verhe himself because it's his commander deck. So we actually got as much of his commander deck. This is this is actually a dope ass fucking cardboard counter. Like, let's get something real. This space stuff right here, this is dope. I appreciate everything about this. Winner!
We did not beat it in 10 minutes. Go back in your box. Okay. So we have a Duretti. Because we wouldn't have... So I have a second Duretti now. Because we wouldn't get a Duretti if we didn't have the Duretti emblem. I feel that's safe to say. What's that symbol? That symbol is just Commander Legends. These cards are just going to be reprints of whatever set they, they, they got their hands on. Okay. All right. Thank you, Zelda. Stop. Go back to what time of day it is. To showcase what time and how much I'm failing on the West Coast, taking forever just to open some cards, man. Okay, so see this? This is traditional magic. There was a pull tab and everything. Ah, I love that. That was some nostalgia right there. Okay, okay. So we're gonna just flip it over and start with the 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 the, the flip cards. Alright, so there there's the Duretti. Oh shit! Some of our original prints, Squeeze Revenge, Commander Legends, and I got a foil, Secret Lair Drop Land. Oh, that's our bonus. So say hello to um, something I should have given more pomp and circumstance. Say hello to the secret card that you get at the back of every secret lair. It's apparently some kind of new basic land. I have a feeling it might be art within the... Whoa. Oh, okay, there, there it is. There it is. I was going to say, this is an Odyssey printing, but it's not. Okay, so everything is, everything is quote, original printed... As if Gavin Verhey's cards were making this deck, but have the Planeswalker symbol as if they're from the list or mystery boosters in the corner. Let's see if I can verify this. So, okay, so here's the double sided cards. Let's, let's, okay, I didn't give the proper, I didn't get, because the whole point of the deck is the coin flippy double, double phase nature of this, right? So, like, if we're going to end the video after this, we're going to end the sesh after this. The whole point of the video are these cards. So these cards are thick. They gave me these like thick commanders that are non-foil. So they got Zender Spilt Eye of Wisdom, but it's also Zender Spilt Eye of Wisdom, just drawn by two different artists on uh, both sides. I mean, it's kind of cool. Um, put that where it can be seen. Um, and then we got Oakum. Ocon Eye of Chaos and Ocon Eye of Chaos. Not gonna lie, the art's actually pretty dope. I don't understand the thick cards. Um Because the reason I don't understand the thick cards, these thick boy cards, that I can clearly just do what I want. But they have the they have the, the hollow stamp on them. So they're considering them real cards, I guess. I I don't I don't I don't, Magic, I don't, Wizards, I don't know what to do with these. These are better than the Strixhaven ones, I could say that, because I've seen the Strixhaven ones, and those things are fat, unless I'm wrong. If they're the same cardboard, I will eat my words later, and I'll admit to that. Ooh, so there's like, so it's like, oh, it's like teal and orange! Red and blue! Contrast! I'm a color nerd! Look! It's like red and blue. For the coin flippiness, and then red and blue. Okay, whatever, whatever. I sh that should have been obvious because the deck is all red and blue. But I, I still don't know what to do with these these fat boy cards because they're fat, and and when fat boy cards are fat, I, I'm I, I can't put them in a sleeve. I can put them in a penny sleeve because then they're like slightly bigger, and then so because the reason I'm confused is you get them in actual card form. So why go through the effort? to put them here when you have them in actual card form and they still have the same cool art 
Like, I just... I don't get it. And the art connects. I just realized that right now. Look. Maybe the reason I got the Fat Boys is so they gave us two copies of them so I can do what I'm about to do right now. So it connects. There's him holding the other. And then it connects on the other side of him holding the other. I mean, that's cool. One's a Cyclops Berserker and one's a Homunculus. Never knew that the two could get along, but you got one on one side and one on the other. So I guess you don't got the text in the way for for these ones because the text would be on the way and the, te the text isn't in the way, so you get to see that gorgeous art. <sighs> you could have just pr printed it on regular cards. Like, like, look, all three of these are double-sided. This, this is actually dope. Look, I even got a propaganda. Why is that significant? I feel like that's significant because I sold a propaganda recently. But I don't remember what set I sold it from. So I'm drawing a blank right now, but now I got a propaganda. And now I got a double-sided propaganda. Yeah, I like. And annoyingly though, look right there. The cards curl, I'm making an S. Making an S, man. I, I, I mean, at this point, is it is it any surprise that card quality is an issue when it comes uh, to Watsy? All right, but the final thing that I want to confirm is what I thought: is everything in the corner mystery boosted? Yes. Yes. So these cards are put in here. Wow, that's actually kind of mesmerizing when every single card in the corner has a Planeswalker symbol. Is anyone else feeling this right now? I'm like, oh, see, there, there, there's a difference. So I could have done that to find out that this is the special secret card in the deck. And then, to look, the tokens don't have the Planeswalker symbol. One more time. Right from the beginning. That angle really gets the reflection on the foil. It's with the Planeswalker symbol in the corner. So look, even the lands are marked as such. You like these lands, Gavin? Yeah, they're not bad lands. Are you? I, yeah. I guess Bloodstorm and Steward is a good card with a dual commander. Yeah. Look at those Planeswalker symbols. So, I have a feeling that th that it means I don't need to ana an analyze this deck as gameplay ready. It's gameplay ready. If a designer of magic is handpicking one of his decks but with the caveat that he's taking out things like Mana Vault and, and Mana Crypt and, 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 and probably Time Walk and, and other super expensive cards. It's probably a safe bet that it's probably pretty good. He's probably thought about it. Look, he's got, he's got a Sweeper and Blasters Act. He's got Doretti. He's got Gawain Kaboomist. Uh, when you put a colorless artifact named Landmine... And then you lose. So it's part of the coin flip strategy. Literally everything is the coin flip strategy. I got Kark the Thumbless in here. Oh, snap! I got another Spark Double. I got a Wandering from her. I got a Barry Drunen. Like, I got good I got good lands. Not shitty lands. I got a, I got Signets. I got Greaves. I got Mindstone. Again, I got good lands. I got Rogues Passes. Good lands. I got, I got good equipment. I got good Mana Rocks. Good equipment. Good basics. And then that's where the non... So then the non-foils are over here. Good lands again. Good utility creatures. Part of the part of the, the whole point of the deck. I'm pretty sure almost every single... Uh, this is a good finisher. I'm very well aware of this. This is a, just a good all-around card. Commander's Plate. 
Like, oh look, an ember cleave. Like, a really good equipment. This is a quarter of the deck. And that's without even checking out the, the rest of the cards that I'm unfamiliar with that are commander staples. Exotic Orchard. Fl Flamekin Village. I didn't even know this was a card. Oh yeah, I did. I don't use it, but it must be useful in this deck to make elementals do something. He's got Gamble in here. He's got Goblin Engineer in here. He's got Inventors in here. He's got, he's got Mirror Munch. He's got Reshape, which is basically a, 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 a Tinker. Reshape is basically Tinker. So he probably doesn't have Tinker. He has Shadow Spear in here. So literally, two equipment make up 30% make up of the deck's value. He's got the Spinner Acknol. Sulfur Falls, Locust God, Talaria West. I already said this. Good lands. We, for once, they actually put. They actually put. The stadium land in the deck. I I didn't need to analyze it and analyze this. This is a good deck. War of Invention is in the deck. Another coin flip. I don't understand this order. Because this is how the deck came. So I don't I don't understand this order that it goes in. Is it like good spells, then utility spells, but then lands are mixed in, and then we got, you know, of course. Look, they even made sure to uh. <clears throat> this confirms it for me. Like when I saw uh, Spark Double, yeah, I put Spark Double even in my Reaper King deck. Um, but when you, when you start seeing a repeated pattern of we're gonna copy your uh, legends but the legends aren't going to have the same name as the copy or the legend rule isn't going to apply you start to see a pattern of what exactly one of my friends told me and he said if you want to improve this deck you just go get a uh, sakashima from commander legends and you and you take out uh the, the original two commanders uh which i'm sorry for you guys um I'll probably put you in the 99 because i i love looking at alternate i and i'm a sucker for pet cards that do cool things and you definitely fit the pet cards that do cool things but one card and i can, we have a kirk Kark is in the deck, so all I have to do is go get an actual Sakashima. Uh, the other one, not this one. Sakashima from Commander's Legends. So it's kind of cool that Sakashima the Imposter is in here. We get the Serum Visions with the Jin Gitaxis on it. We get the Slip Through Space. Just the old. I, I mean, I wish the, the Soul Ring was like, you know, like an old school one or something. Just to, like, look, we even get the actual Talisman. Like, there is ne there's nothing bad about this deck. And, uh, That makes the deck analysis of this really easy. And because the deck analysis of this is really easy, there's not much more to say. I definitely had fun. I'm going to have some fun sleeving up the deck. Um, maybe also look out uh, for some actual gaming videos coming soon. I've, uh, let's just say as a console player, I may have realized the error of my ways if anyone catches my drift. Oh, is that a race over there? I need to go to my master now. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, with that said, I need to clean up and it seems like I have lost there we go for a second I thought I lost the other coin flip cards so I'm gonna recollect them back up the re double face cards uh, the new secret mountain that comes from Ooh, Daniel Warren Johnson I don't know what this art is from. That is a surfer on lava. Let's just get that clear. That is a surfer on lava. Or someone throwing lava from from the magma. It's very ambiguous. I mean, I'm going to keep it. This is my secret card. I mean, I guess that is my final announcement. I'm not sure I even want to purchase Secret Layers anymore. Like, I'm really glad this package finally came. Um, 
I'm glad I can still be positive about magic in my own way. But I don't know what Secret Lair is doing anymore. And if I'm being completely honest, the video I started this video with is voting with our wallets actually did things. And in full disclosure, I've been buying Secret Lairs for two years. I've loved nearly all of them that I've purchased. Every one that I've gotten my hands on, I've pretty much loved. I've not wanted to keep every card within the lair themselves. And let's just say magic has not made it easy to, to enjoy trying to get your money back on some of these purchases. They've definitely not made it easy. In fact, in my last video, I complained about how this year alone they've reprinted Birds of Paradise. I'm still pissed about that. That still annoys me. And they're going to reprint Birds of Paradise probably four more times next year or more. Like, that's just a prediction. I, I, I don't know. I have no basis in evidence. But, like, if I call it, hey, someone let me know. Um, they're, they're, but they showed it with Soul Ring. They're doing so much reprint equity. The only thing I can do, they're, they're burning through so much reprint equity. There we go. They're burning through so much reprint equity by just churning out and churning out everything. And, and every set, everything is becoming this 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 deluge of 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 reprints and are there good cards in it and, and how many alternate versions can we get can we have seven different alternate versions but this one alternate version is worth four thousand dollars that was one of the hosts with the neon dynasty thing that's why i was so excited that i got a an actual uh green i think i got a green neon foil legendary because there's that four thousand dollar uh uh hitosogu devouring chaos out there that uh would have been cool to open and obviously um would have been a very hype moment to have happened on camera. And and I think that's... I think that's where I need to go. I think I need to bring back the hype. Because I don't mind the alternates. But when even Secret Lair is showing their colors... Even when Secret Lair themselves is showing their colors... They're choosing to grab reprints from art that people may or may not hold special. Like, people probably like that Grand Prix Commander art. Because I know I did. I was like, where do you get that? I, I would have been willing to pay $10 for it. Now I don't even want to pay the 5 that I saw it marked up for when I when I looked over here on my... On my uh, on my website all because it's just being reprinted into secret layer or it's being reprinted in the next uh box set as special alternate artifacts like the brothers were has anyone looked at that like y'all go crazy for the serialized brother war uh retro artifacts please y'all go crazy for them i i implore you to go crazy for them but as a player like me i'm just smiling from ear to ear because I can now get worm coil engines for five dollars. I can now get, I think it's platinum angels. Maybe she's not in the actual. Uh, listen, I was just imagining it. But staple artifacts, not just swift foot boots, not just uh, arcane signet, not just talismans. Like, there's there's some really good retro artifacts in the set that I think paradox engine was one of them. I think the pan harmonicon was one of them. Like cards that were once ten to fifteen dollars staples are now in the retro thing super dirt cheap so i don't know if that means that the product is being over opened in brothers war or if people are doing like i'm doing and trying to vote with our wallet and and show wizards that we don't want to put up with this anymore it could be a little bit of both it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive we are adults most of us anyway and and we can make our own decisions so it's a it's an interesting thing right now because even though i hate magic i want to buy it more than ever i just don't want to buy it Kind of like with video games play. It's kind of why my channel is both video games and, and magic. I don't want to buy a product that spits in the face of its customers choosing to engage with it. And I know people people keep commenting on the Blake Rasmussen comment. Well, don't engage with all of it. As I said in my last video, this year was hard for me. I wanted to engage with all of it. But I had to step back. And take a reevaluation 
because I can't engage with all of it. There's a huge difference between don't engage with all of it and can't engage with all of it. A huge fucking difference. Because don't means it's like you're being dismissive of people's cares and wants. And can't ties in. Well, maybe can't and don't are the same. And I was I was super emphasized about that. But like, when you say don't, it's like you telling me that not everything is for you. But I'm telling you everything was for me. And I can't keep up with it. So can you give us a break to let us enjoy it? And it's coming from two philosophical perspectives that Wizards doesn't seem to want to embrace with us and the only thing I can do is like go back to the first part of the year and buy Kamigawa Neon Dynasty booster buy, buy Streets of New Capenna booster packs like maybe even go crazy and buy Modern Horizons 1 maybe go crazy buy older boxes like Call Time uh, uh, Kaladesh and, and call yeah Call Time too. I missed out on all of Call Time completely all of Call Time so I'll definitely be going back to the snowy wastelands of call time and, and, and picking some of that stuff up. So it's just like, I just want to pick it up from the people that sell it to me from, from other dealers than the people that, to help them recoup their money instead of wizards themselves just vacuuming up all the money and saying, none for you, none for you, none for you. They're like a reverse Oprah. All for me, none for you. <laughs> Wizards, stop being like reverse Oprah. Please. Please stop being like reverse Oprah. Until next time, which might be a video game. Hey, someone in the chat. Yo. But wizards, please don't be like reverse Oprah and all for me and none for anybody else. Bye.